Welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel here. I hope you're having a beautiful day, night, wherever you are worldwide. This is gonna be a wonderful program. I have two special guests, doctors that I respect highly, doctors that I have gone to, spoken to about myself as well as other people worldwide. Uh, this program is called the Biological Set Point of Weight Loss. And I have two renowned doctors, physicians, medical doctors. I have Dr. Uh, Sofer, Dr. Ariel Sofer, uh, on the left there, as you can see. And I have Dr. Yale Myers on the right there. Uh, she's an internist. Dr. Sofer is a cardiologist, vein specialist. And uh, we're going to get a lot of great information from both of them today. Uh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy it. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Don't go anywhere. This is the program you want to listen to. Well, hello there, Dr. Myers, Dr. Sofer. It's so wonderful to finally get together with you. And again, I see you outside of this video, but I don't ever get to see you inside the video. So mm -hmm. what makes it special is that other people out there get to see you, get to hear you, get to hear what you have to say. Uh, so in your practice, obesity, so common. Uh, and by the way, I am going to come back on this later because this is a fairly newer book that uh, if you look at this handsome guy right here, Effortless Weight Loss. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mandel, for allowing us to be on your program and, and get a glimpse as to what you do, which uh, I see like so many people out there. I get the little snippets every day and they're always so positive and I appreciate you for that positivity and, the, and all the education that you help people with. I also wanted to really um uh give my thanks to um you know my 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 doctor actually uh dr yael myers who is not only an ivy league educated brilliant physician but also a very warm uh person that really does care about um every individual that she comes across and she has been my inspiration for this book the prescription strength book which is she has been treating people for obesity for a long time and made me more and more aware of this new biologic set point that was recently reiterated by people uh, subsequently, so down the line, by people like Oprah Winfrey, who finally came out and said, listen, you know, we've been going down this pathway of losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, trying different fads, but ultimately it seems to be clear, the scientific community has made it really clear that there's a biologic set point as well. So there's two things at play. One, a set point that we're kind of gravitating towards with each person being a little bit individual. And two, the environment and the choices that we make and uh, people like Dr. Myers and Dr. Mendel have been great in teaching us those tricks of the trade. Go ahead. So pertaining to a set point for our listeners perspective and understanding a set point is a particular area within our brains that's programmed to not allow us to really take off that weight so easy because it wants to come back. It's harder to lose weight. Well, uh, you know, in, in uh, regular speak, let's just say, and thank you for having me on the program before I even speak about a medical term. In regular speak, we would call it a plateau when you're on a diet, so to speak, and you're trying to lose weight and you're, you know, you're taking in less calories or you're exercising more, your body might want to sort of rest at that place. You know, you're, 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 you're pushing and pushing against this um, weight that you can't move against despite restricting your calories and increasing your expenditure, you're exercising more. So that's a plateau. We call it also a set point now. And yes, it's been a frustrating and almost a little researched area of weight loss that we're now discovering has a great potential to help people to ultimately meet their goals. Um, I hear a lot of frustration around the set point or the plateau. So, so basically, someone's trying to lose weight. They're they're counting calories, but as I as I see as the years go on, the research shows that counting calories is not always the answer because it changes the shift of hormones in the system as well, which the thyroid gland and other parts of the brain change because it's like saying, okay, the brain's saying, well, I'm in a deserted place in an island right now. And if I'm not eating, get enough food and vice versa, I want to conserve. 
and you've been saying this for years. I've watched a lot of your programs, and you've been saying this for years. You've been taking into account the thyroid gland. You've been taking into account things that affect other parts of the body, like the apple cider vinegar discussions and so forth. In the end, it's an interplay, but it's really not a dietary problem. In fact, if you look historically, diets have failed people, not as much people failing diets. In other words, there is this um, uh, place in our brains that wants to get us to where where the brain thinks it wants to go. And all of these um, you know, calorie restrictions and so forth have really failed over time. So these new medications going around the things you've been saying or, or using the hormone balancing around the things that you've been talking about, the problems with sugar, insulin, and so forth, seems to be the crux of these new, what are called GLP-1 medications that are basically resetting the hormone balance allowing people then to live in a more comfortable place and not even then have to think about what to eat because it becomes more natural, particularly if they've taken on things like the Mediterranean style diet that you've been espousing uh, for years. So the GLP-1 basically has many factors. First, it came out for uh, diabetes originally, then altered in, in, into certain ones that got FDA approved through weight loss because of increased satiety, slower entering of the stomach, uh, as well as other other things towards it. Um, yeah, go ahead. Just wanted well, to well, they act on the gut and on the brain. So the hormones go throughout the body and act on the, on the gut, making you feel more full, and they act on the brain to make you kind of want to crave things a little bit differently. Visceral fat, the dangerous fat, cardiovascular disease, clogged arteries, blocked arteries, people who like to drink lots of sodas, excessive sugars that don't get stored as glycogen, get stored as fat, adipose tissue, all that starts to get worse and then eventually causes a fatty liver and people living on fried foods. Uh, we've got, you know, the bad fats, the trans fats, and then we have to make decisions. And I think that's where it really comes down to making decisions yeah. when people are ready because people come to you and let's say they're not ready, but they need to lose weight. If they don't lose weight, they have to face those, those repercussions. Well, I just want to be clear that, you know, some of the things that Dr. Sofer was talking about with the, well, the early satiety and also the, the decrease in craving or attachment to food that happens in the brain with these medications, not the GLP, it's a GLP and GIP addition. It's the combination molecule that has that magic factor in the brain. And I've seen in my clinical experience and with patients um, using these medications that they, <clears throat> they crave um, food less, they have less what we call food noise. And in fact, they are able to um, maintain the weight loss that they achieve with these medications because the, they've retrained their brain to some degree. I mean, much of the problem of obesity is in the habits and in the attachment to the food. It's a biologic problem, needs a biologic solution to get people retrained. And for that, we've started this website. It's free. The simplemd.com website allows people to kind of get a better idea of the education that needs to be um, then learned once the food noise is dialed down. So some people have so much difficulty. I did for a period of my life where there was a period of time I was an athlete. There was also a period of time that I actually found myself not being able to turn down the food noise to move away from the potato chips when I was hungry, to even do it subconsciously when I didn't even realize I wanted to eat, I was still sort of eating. So in the end, this food noise gets turned down by the complex interplay of insulin and these and these hormones that you've been talking about for years that foods can affect but this way you don't have to make a choice it gets in these cases injected with you know once a week and then you forget about it and then you realize the weight starts coming down and you start being able to make better choices listening to you and looking back at your other videos and going oh i could do this and i could do that getting better recipes all of this educational stuff we're starting to put together in our Simple MD website that allows people to better understand um, the educational value of what we're doing. Yeah, I will definitely attach all the information for anyone to getting information from you. 
uh, your website, which has information about you, about the recipes you put together, uh, as well as uh, your book, in case they're interested, which yeah. obviously is uh, through Amazon that you mentioned. But I also want to let the, my audience know that I have no affiliation with Amazon, with him, with the book, no affiliation with anything else. This is strictly out of a, a, a professional uh, way of educating people that hopefully you can gain something from this. Um, I read book, the book. We, we yes. don't, we're not looking to profit on the book. We sell it at a dollar ninety nine, so that it just we just give it at the at the at the price that we can get the education out there. We put little parts of it for free on the Simple MD website. What would it be that the uh, the best advice for someone that's when it comes to the right foods or maybe the exercise or the meditation or stress or ways of of helping a person if they were if they had an issue of obesity insulin resistance their diet was bad what are the few things that you would tell someone regarding you better start eating these foods you better start doing this or doing that what what's a common thing that you would come across with a typical patient that has conditions that need to change from a cardiovascular point of view you can both say them together. You can share. You can share your thoughts. Yeah, well, let's just roll we'll riff. So num number right. one, um, I think you, you have to uh, f follow the Mediterranean diet, the Mediterranean style that's been shown by all. I'm not talking about a book. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about that Mediterranean diet style, which, which focuses in on things like, you know, extra virgin olive oil as your fat source, not butter, which focus on, you know, ve vegetables, um, you know, and and fish as opposed to sort of, you know, you know, meats and, and, and fat. So the, the, that's the number one thing. What about, what about n another one? Well, I mean, look, good habits are extremely important because the weight is the dangerous thing, but it all starts with what you put in your mouth. Okay. So when I start with an obese patient, um, I tell them, okay, I'm just going to give you a couple like, rules. Number one, no snacking after dinner because the body does need some rest time. And Dr. Sofer really emphasizes this a lot in his book, which is intermittent fasting. Now, a lot of studies have shown that the body needs 12 hours minimum of rest. And there is something for sure, biologically speaking, for the body to be able to perform other functions and not have to keep metabolizing food, metabolizing food, so it can repair DNA, do all kinds of other functions that it's supposed to be doing. And so much he's, you know, Alan's talked about the importance of good sleep. Not only is good sleep, meaning, you, you know, you have to get your REM sleep, you have to have a quiet place for eight hours and that so forth, but you can't also be, you shouldn't be a digesting during that time. So there has to be this, like she's saying, you have to stop eating well in advance of you going a to good sleep. three hours, a good three hours. Right, exactly. And uh, I learned that I think from you years ago, and then continue that along your uh, a, a sleep pathway with all the other sort of you must have good good sleep and give the body the time to rest so mediterranean diet good rest exercise capacity so i call we call it actually um sort of a a, a, a me meaningful exercise so you need to do something that you can do you need to do it in a way that you, you enjoy you enjoy yeah. you can do it yeah. we actually say almost some sort of a form of meditation you know you yeah. have to at that point it would releases all sorts of endorphins without hurting yourself because then it's counterproductive. So you find that type of exercise that's right for you. Good. Well, I'm going to surprise you with one. I actually recommend to the patients something like the following. I tell them we need to starve this issue of energy. That's what I. Okay. I want to interrupt you. One thing. Okay. The first time I met Dr. Myers, we connected. Why? Because she likes to think holistic. She's, I, she's, I think she's a Reiki uh, person in the past. She's really in a holistic. And that's a beautiful thing coming from a medical doctor. Trust me. I won't have to say anymore. So when someone thinks that way, they want to give you the alternative first to see if you could do it on your own before they take the sledgehammer and do anything else. Use the fly swatter, which, 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 which is amazing go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt you go ahead no it's okay no it's it, i i think that this is sort of an alternative approach but i personally think that this the the especially the chronic dieters the the professional weight losers they i think they have it all wrong in the sense that you need to starve this issue of energy that's uh, wrong okay i don't think they need to give this 
problem, more and more attention and this and, 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 you know, journal their calories and all this. I, I, I basically think that's why these GLP GIP um, uh, products are so one of the reasons they're so successful is because of that decrease in the food noise, because basically if your habits are good, like I said, it starts with what you put in your mouth, if your habits are good, your body will eventually release the weight, you know, and, I, and I then, believe that. Hundred percent to your to your goal, and then the other thing that I wanted to say was regarding the biological set point of weight loss. Now people really uh, bemoan the, their plateaus, and I'm always telling them just keep keep pushing the rock. Your your job is to push the rock, not to move it. Your body will move it eventually, but you push, you push, you push, and if you keep up the restriction in in the calories and you, you use the medications or whatever it is that you're doing, your restriction in calories and you exercise, eventually your set point will move. Now, the interesting thing is if I tell them, let's put it the opposite way, because one day you're going to get to to your goal weight. Okay. And then you're going to be at a party, you have a slice of pizza or a piece of cake, whatever, and it'll be hard for it to move in the opposite direction. So this, these set points work for people in both directions, just so you know. So then people kind of, you know, they, they 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 feel a little bit better about the idea of a biological set point. And, and one last thing, one last thing I want to contribute to Dr. Myers, Dr. Sofer, that I think is one of the most important things that I have found that's helped myself, that's helped many of the hundreds or thousands of people I've dealt with, soluble fiber. Mm -hmm. Soluble fiber uh, latches onto cholesterol, takes it out of the body. Soluble fiber slows digestion from the stomach and the duodenum. Soluble fiber actually uh, maintains, sustains normal insulin glucose levels, soluble fiber, keeps you full, gives you satiety. Oh, so important. And, uh, Beyond important. It, it Not only does it do all those things, but it also presents the calories that you take at a at a more consistent way as opposed to this this sort of the spike in the valleys that come when you when you have food. So being able, the body likes to kind of, you know, take it in that way as if we're foraging from the ground or even you know, even eating, eating meat from a source, it, it, it allows you to slow those, the movements of the, the pancreas and, and, and the hormones that come cyclically. They're all cycles and it, adding fiber sort of flattens that curve out a little bit, which is really, really important. Something that you stress a lot. I got to tell you, I make a big uh, push towards fiber on a daily basis. It's in our, it's in our book and, and, and in our philosophy. The fiber is a prebiotic, doesn't get digested. We don't have the enzymes in our small intestine to digest it. It feeds our probiotics, obviously. Uh, and then we have some beautiful things that happen after that. So, um, oh, great. That was beautiful. Uh, any last things that you want to contribute or mention before we say goodbye to our beautiful audience out there? I just love the combination of everything that you put on your programs showing momentary tips that help people to, um, you know, follow the better habits of health that, that you've been talking about and we've been, you know, sort of writing about for years, along with these new breakthroughs that are changing the way that we're looking at why people uh, become obese and how we're going to be able to cure this problem now together. That's great. Beautiful. So, Anyways, uh, it's been been a really a pleasure. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed coming together with both of you. And um, my subs, uh, please share this with your friends and family. I will leave the information in the description below of the website uh, pertaining to uh, Dr. Sofer's uh, beautiful book he put together, as well as information. He has all kinds of recipes and, and education. I think hopefully you'll you'll be very happy to. Learn from there. And uh, Dr. Sofer, Dr. Myers, I want to say blessings to all of you. Keep up the great work. Keep helping, serving, loving. That's what it's about. And that's what you're, that's what both you are about. That's what I love about you the most, more than anything. So uh, we'll say uh, bye to you for right now. We'll have you back again in the future. All right. Thanks. You take Thanks. care. God bless. All right. Bye bye, -bye now. Bye bye.